very much and goes up into second place. Bit of contact in the hip and shoulder between Innistrosa and Gallo. Drops Gallo now down behind her Drilla Caretta as well. What an amazing race so far. We have eight cars right now squabbling for the lead. Ten laps into the grand final here at Prague. At the moment, it's Isaac and from De Bruyne near Zona, but these guys behind looking to make an impression. Ango and Estroza diving up the inside of the Kuma Miyazona makes a move in Estroza, who's been a bit anonymous, I say, so far, now up into a podium position. Miyazono fourth behind him is Gallo and Callum Roach. Carazza there too, and Drummond. Look how close all these guys are. And we still have 22 laps to go for the lead. Kind of up the inside, takes Suzaki back into the lead, goes the Dutch driver. It's action all the way so far. This is a corker of a race, isn't it? As you said, JP. Out of the final corner we go then. De Bruyne leads from Takuma Sasaki. In the Strozo was about 60 of a second adrift of them across the timeline, but it only takes a couple of corners and a couple of spicy moves between these two to bring them right back into play then. Into the chicane we go. De Bruyne is the lead. There's in the Gallo with Miazono very close behind. Let's not forget a lap or so ago. Miazono is in the lead of this race. He's now down into fifth position. Blink and you'll miss it stuff here in the Nations Cup Grand Final. Through the head when we go. I'd love to have another look at the tyre line actually for these drivers as well and see just how worn they are. If anybody's significantly more worn than others because that could prove to be the difference. It, or, the thing is as well to think about, they're all running no to tail though. Is someone going to go for an undercut and try and play a bit of a blinder here, get themselves out of the clear air and then hopefully the race will come from a bit later. Interesting you say that, Tom. I'm looking at lap times right now. Craig Lopez was boxed earlier on to the 16 0 last lap. These guys are all doing high to mid 17s. So Coca Lopez, the fastest man on track right now, is down the field, but before long, he'll be on the back of this massive pack of cars. So we find me a series in the world where the racing is as close as this. Here comes Suzaki up the inside once again. Now I think they're getting to the point now where they're just letting it happen. But De Bruyne pulls to the right. In the strokes, I think it's been pitting. In the right. strokes, the pits. Yeah, first so, to blink. Yeah, so he is the first blink. He's going to go for that undercut then. Where is he going to go in terms of his strategy? Does he go for mediums? Does he go for softs? Surely it'll be a soft, soft strategy to the end of this one. He'll need another pit Thanks. stop, and he does. Yeah, absolutely no surprise there at all for Angel and But The crucial question is, where is he going to emerge? Is he going to be in clear air, or is he going to be in traffic? Comes out, ah, oh, it's not brilliant for him because he's got Dremont and Serrano right up in front of him, and they're involved in their own battle in their own race. Yeah, while well, that happened, Kaiser Bruin back to lead, and Valerio Gallo back up into third place. Kaiser Bruin there sideways gets the wheels lit up coming out of the hip and that allows Suzaki back onto the rear spoiler of the Netherlands flags draped X2019. Here's to Kimi Miyazono having to lift the throttle. Look at the overrun he's got now. He's side by side with Valerio Gallo. They're all going for the move down here. Kai De Bruin goes defensive into the right-hander. Free wide then as we go through Gallo on the inside there. Two by two, this is not going to end well, boys. They were out coming through to the chicane. Now who's going to blink first, Kai? Just about gets back into the line again. Oh. This, this ain't going to end well. <laughs> this is fantastic, isn't it? So two Japanese drivers first and third at the moment, but for how long? Gallo there looking for the move. Miyazono also in the mix. Three abreast we go once again down into the hairpin bend. So De Bruyne on the inside, Miyazono on the outside. So Saki's there ready to go as well. De Bruyne comes into the pit lane as well as Adriano Carazza. So they're going to go and get themselves out of trouble and decide to let the other drivers squabble amongst themselves. Fair point, because it's going to cost them all time if they're knocking seven bells out of one another. And if they can get themselves into clear air once they've made their pit stops, it could prove to be beneficial. Just to correct myself earlier on, it's uh, Lopez and Barbara that Inostroza emerged from behind. So let's see where the other drivers are relative to Angel Inostroza. So De Bruyne out of the pit lane and Carazza as well. And they are behind Angel Inostroza. So that lap where these guys have all been fighting on tonight, that's cost them track position. Hey, how good has this been so far? This Brilliant. has been amazing, hasn't it? And we've still got fighting going on. Some people are pitted, but still five cars in contention there. You can see the tyre life of the cars remaining on circuit. Those rear tyres starting to become an issue for some drivers. Keep an eye out for Bush, but keep an eye out for the tail coming out throughout corners. Gallo now fighting with Mia Zola. How many times have you said that in past events? It's become to the chicane once more. Great drive so far from Callum Roach, the American driver. He's right in the mix there. Anyone, there's about eight drivers, nine drivers could win this race at the moment. Yeah, that would be crap. He's been Callum Roach. This is brilliant for uh, him, as you say. Robbie Hayek also got in too badly in second position. He's not quite involved in this leading group, but nonetheless, he's still up inside the top six at the moment. If the checker flag fell now, he would score a point. You know who's been the fastest man on track the last few laps? It's going to be Coca Lopez. Coca Lopez, Lopez, Lopez by yeah. quite a bit. So, Coca Lopez, his race is coming back alive. Heck decides to box then for that um, a fresh set of tyres. Roach goes up into fourth place, overtaking Killian Drummond. Sorry, that's where he was before. Apologies. But Miazona and Gallo, I think that's starting to think, right, okay, guys, we've got to really just. 
focus a bit now. All this fighting, as you said before, all this changing of position, all this squabbling going to corners. It's great TV, we want to see more of it, but of course it does actually harm their races in the long run. Look what he's done for Lopez as well now with um, the pit stop there for Robbie Hedley, because that's giving him from about five seconds to now a seven second buffer, which he can just go and clear off and drive his own race. This is working out really nicely here for Jorge Lopez. Let's see how it works out later on in the race. We're getting towards the halfway stages of this one. Not quite there as it stands now. These guys have sort of quietened down a little bit now at the top. Well, think, Coco Lopez is seven seconds off this guy's and he's made a pit stop. These guys have not made a stop. That is the time he's made up. So I think maybe they've, they've cottoned onto this. And, OK, we're actually now at threat from Coco Lopez. What a story that would be, eh? Starting from the back of the field and working his way back up, just using those years of experience, those years of knowledge. That is why Coco Lopez, you can never count him out at these events. Still a with Killing Dumont. Will we see some up in the pit? We do. Gallo, Roach and Mia Zono. Or Sasaki opting to stay out, though. Will this hurt him? Let's see what happens then for Takuma Sasaki. He's the only outlier. Everybody else, as you said, into the box. Dumont also in as well. Lopez is now going to think Christmas has come early because he's going to have a nice, fresh clear bit of track in front of him as the rest of the field come barreling on through. You can see what that's cost to Duma Miyazono as well. Now, where is Serrano? He's just sort of in the middle of this group at the moment. You can see him right on the back there of Valerio Gallo. So Miyazono with, what, 2.1 seconds to Adriano Carazza. It's working out all right for them so far, but look at that there for Coco Lopez. The only problem he's going to face is this man here, Edwin Estroza, who's on a quick pop out of tyre. Oh, contact between the two, Inostroza wasting no time, there's more contact, Inostroza in the wall, tries to go around the outside, I don't really know what he was thinking there, there was never going to be a move on there for Ango and Inostroza, just looked, and I don't know, I mean, from my point of view, there was no space for that move to happen. It's always going to be a case of the unstoppable force of the immovable object in some yeah, cases for these drivers, isn't it? And unfortunately there for Angel Estroza, it's not worked out at all for him. He's now right at the back of the field. Again, it is good news though for Coque Lopez. I need to see a replay of that just to work out exactly what happened there. But as you say, Coque Lopez <laughs> now clear off. Well, to give us a he's played over 6,000 hours, hours of Gran Turismo. Good news for him. He's got seven seconds of an advantage at low, over Lopez. Is, is that what 6,000 hours is worth? Seven seconds. Here's a replay then. What happened between Coco Lopez and Angelina Estroza? Now, from my view, in Estroza tried to force a gap where there wasn't one. He's not quite alongside there. Coco Lopez goes through the corner, has a wiggle and touches him. I just don't know. I mean, you're putting yourself in a position where it's going to be very risky out there, Tom. I think it's 61 half a dozen of the other, isn't it? Like you say, you're always a bit risky when you go on the outside of the corner. A moment like that, it's not Coque Lopez's fault. If you have a twitch on the rear, you have a twitch on the rear, there's nothing you can do about it. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time as the driver trying to overtake, it's unfortunate, but I don't think it's penalty worthy. We'll wait and see what the stewards decide. We haven't seen this under investigation, so they may just deem it as a race against them. That would be my take on it, but we'll wait and see what they can see with all of their different camera angles. I mean, I do. I do hope not, because the Coco Lopez story is fantastic, and I, I do genuinely think it's just one of those things. But as you say, we'll wait for the stewards, they know better than we do, and uh, we'll just rejoin the fight for now. So Zaki, interestingly, staying out a bit longer now. By staying out, that gap to Coco Lopez is coming down. And, and the gap to Coco Lopez is the gap minus a pit stop. So once everyone's boxed once, guess who's going to be leading this race? Yeah, but also, guess who's going to be on the slower compound of tyre at the end of this race? So, I wonder how that's going to play out there for him. I don't think he is. I think he's going to go wrong in the medium and go to the soft at the end. Like, that's what I think he's going to do. Point. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is a very interesting strategy for them for Coque Lopez. The problem he's got is tied up with Adriano Carazza. They're all there on the soft run of tyre, and they could really upset Coque Lopez's rhythm. Over the time line we go. We're over the halfway stage now of this race. The Brutti does surely have a lunge on the inside, and he does. Lopez decided not to hold him up. Today. This is so clever. This is so clever. Lopez is just looking for race time right now. He knows these guys are going to be quicker. There's no point fighting them. There's no point doing what they all did to each other at the start of the race, slow each other up. If a, if a move's being made, he'll just let it happen and then just try and stay with them for as long as possible. Use that draft. Because any moment he's in the draft, he's getting basically free speed. He's getting three um, kilometers an hour that he wouldn't get before. So right now, you can see closing up in the back of Kai the Bruin. I, I doubt very much he'll go for that overtake. We'll probably let Carazza go for the move. There you go, he gets out of the way. So this is just... 8,000 IQ driving from Coco Lopez. I'm really curious to whether this is going to happen. Well, yeah, let them, those two, as you say, in front, just go and biff it out a bunch of them. The, the worst case scenario here for Coco Lopez is that Adriano Carazza decides to back off the gas and slow up Lopez so that they can no run, their own, exactly, <laughs> yeah. run their own race, exactly. Or a mistake comes into play for Lopez, perhaps. But at the moment, he's driving absolutely perfectly, as you say. So Saki is still lead. He's going long on this medium pop-up of time. He's going to try and go to the... Uh, 
soft compound as late as he possibly can to have his optimum tire life. But the, the lap times between them, I mean, what's he, one and a half seconds slower than the soft shots of Bruno and Carrax? Now they're hemorrhaging into that lead. Yeah, yeah, it's really, um, they're really slowing down now. Zaki needs to think about what he's doing. Um, Carrax here practices six hours a day. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Practices what? Does not say? Yeah, practices what? I think weightlifting. Have you seen the guy? He's massive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, Carrax, it is, that uh, sits in third place and he'll be right on board with him into the head of Ben Wink, to bring him a little bit wide actually, onto the kerb on the outside, that's okay, he doesn't need to worry too much about it for now, but it could leave another threat as we head to the next big breaking zone. Now Carazza has well, a little bit of reputation of being quite fighty, shall we say, in these GT World Series events. Will we do the same? Oh my word, guys, be careful going down to the uh, the tight right hand, and Kaido Bruin keeps the inside line, and he's just hanging on in the background there on his uh, solo compound attire, Pedro Lopez, just getting a free ride. Saving a bit of fuel as well, not doing too bad. Why not? Why but, not? Yeah. but now look behind. Yeah, exactly. We've got, we've got Mia Zona, we've got Gallo, Serrano, Roche, Drummond, all closing on this lead group. I'm probably wondering, how oh, did Kofi Lopez do here? What's he doing here? <laughs> so I up, he's got a nosebleed. Carazza lunges to the inside of Kai De Bruyne and gets the move done into second place. De Bruyne now decides to sit in his wheel tracks. Is he going to try and attack? The, the problem for Kofi Lopez here is that, as you say, Jimmy, Mia Zona, Gallo, Serrano, etc., they're all very close behind. And, Whilst these two are starting to fight amongst one another, that could bring them all back into contention. And to give you an idea, I mean, entire life does play into this too. Suzaki, on his own, with a 17.4 there. Kofi Lopez, on the medium tyre, with a 16.0, being dra dragged along by these guys. This is, this is outstanding from Coke and Lopez so far. I cannot overstate that enough. We've still got a long way to go. A lot can happen, but to put yourself in this position to last is amazing. Like I said, the only problem is these guys behind, because yeah, they have really upset his race and really upset his rhythm and his whole strategy. They could prove to be that one catalyst and the big headache that Coke and Lopez might need a bit of paracetamol for later on in this race. Heading down into the hairpin, then we go. On board here with Takuma Miyazono, the shy retiring Japanese driver, a man of fairly modest words, actually, as a, as a rule for Takumi Miyazono, but a very ferocious and tenacious racing driver. Yeah, you couldn't meet a guy who's more different on track to how he is uh, off track, as uh, meanwhile, Coco Lopez, again, he's always he's just pulling out the sim screen, just to not pull onto the back of him. But now, as you say, Tom, he's got Takumi Miyazono right on his rear wing. Not only him, he's got Gallo. He's got Serrano, Roach is there too, on board now with Takuma Miyazono. I don't think we're going to see Lopez fight this too much, or will he? Going in to T1, now T2, the first big break for that. Does Miyazono go for the lunge? He does big lunge at the inside, and following him through goes Valerio Gallo, although he tries to go against them, walked out wide by Koke Lopez, and this is what we're talking about. Lopez can't really hang with these guys right now. There's Serrano there as well, but uh, at the moment now struggling for speed is Lopez. He needs to fight, not fight it too much. The problem for these guys as well is look at Takuma a second, that gets shrunk down to one second, it's going to be a half a second or so in the next few quarters because of course those medium tyres are, are going to be absolutely toast for the previous Sasaki and he's going to surely have to box before too long, so he's a little bit trashy compared to the rest of them, is he going to hold these guys up? I think going for the one stop is very, very brave from Sasaki. Um, I think if I was him now, I'd box, I'd box now and take the risk because we're going to lose so much time just being steamrolled by all these guys behind because they're going to have so much more pace than he is at this point. And uh, oh, for the scale, oh, look at them all now for conversion back on first position. The top nine drivers separated by less than a second and a half at this point. It is so close. De Bruyne there, inside line for him against Adriano Carazza. Sasaki's going to box De Bruyne. He's going to go in as well. So he wants another set of soft boots to end this race. Whereas De Bruyne has gone to the medium compound of tyre. Let's wait and see uh, what his race is going to look I, like. I think it's soft. No, he goes to, to medium. So he's done um, medium, soft, medium which is an interesting strategy for Kai De Bruyne. Let's see whether that pays off, because he'll have a little bit more tyre life compared to the soft tyres at the end of this race. About six or seven laps we saw for those soft tyres, so Sasaki's car will be crying in pain at the end of this race. De Bruyne will have less one lap pace, but also more tyre life towards the end of that one. Could this prove to be a good strategy for Kai De Bruyne? We'll wait and see. What it has done is release that cork from the bottom for the rest of the drivers in front at the moment. The Adono now with a half-second advantage over Serrano and Gallo. If I was Lopez, I think I'd box now. Get 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 into the box now and just go that soft tyre and try and undercut these guys and just fight at the end. Because there's not much more you can do. Valero Gallo, again, despite I think being in every position apart from first so far, is now back again. 
in third, chasing Serrano and Miyazono. I mean, these top four drivers are just stalwarts of the GT World Series. Amazing to see them all together yet again. Will they go for a move down into the heaven? No, they don't. Just looking at the tyre line here for the medium shot drivers. They're about 12, 13, 14 laps. You see Gallo there on the outside of Jose Serrano, the exit in the final corner, and gets the move done up into second. About 13 to 14 laps for those drivers. Tony Lopez is just done lap 13. So I imagine those medium tyres are not going to be feeling very handy underneath the Spaniard, and I'm sure he's going to have to come in and box for a set of fresh, soft boots at the end of this race, which will give him a pace advantage, but it will cost him track position. Yeah, I think so too. But, um, this has been an amazing race so far. Still 10 laps to go here in the grand final of the Round 2 of Nations Cup here at Prague. We've had an amazing race so far. Still a third of it to go as Kyle the Bruin gets a bit of a suck in the rest of the bump drafting. Don't do that, Clint Stewart. This is okay, that's Kyle the Bruin. As we come in now to the bottom half of this course. Amazing downhill breaking zone. Good place for a move with a close enough Gallo. Not quite because of his at right now. Serrano, look at his tyres though. He was absolutely shot on the rear. He's up two laps longer than the likes of Gallo, the rear zone there, etc. And he's really going to be crying out in pain. I'm sure he's going to come into the pits at the end of this. And all of the next lap. Otherwise, he's going to be he's going to be a sitting duck. And the thing is, that then gives us a reference point for the other drivers who are on the soft top of the tyre towards the end of this one. And we're still at a point where any of these drivers can win this race. It's so close. I mean, again, I've not seen a race this close in the Nations Cup for a very long time. Killing you want Serrano. No, they're all boxing. Mizar, yeah, Mizar and Gallo, they all box. Roach does not. Can a Roach opt, opt to stay out there? The American driver maybe knows something that he don't. So this is now the last stop. This is the last roll of the dice. You're showing your hand now. You're showing your pace. It's now a straight fight to the end for victory here in the grand final. Here's Zono at the pit lane. There goes Kai De Bruyne and Suzaki in front. So Kai De Bruyne, though, of course, on that medium compound attire, actually ahead of Suzaki on that soft. So um, Kai De Bruyne able to keep that pace up at the moment on the medium, but I don't think he's going to be able to compare to me as Ono and Gallo. Not, no, I don't think so at all. No, well, the race will come to him at the end, as we said, and probably is leading to a, a bit of a target on his back at the moment. So we'll see what happens here for Kai De Bruyne. He sits in fourth place for now, but the one that pace is just not going to be there for him. So as long as we see the soft uh, run of doom, it's 10 laps. And that will be now 10 laps from the end. So this is perfect for me as owner, fellow, etc. But the kind of Bruin is the pace going to be enough? We'll wait and see. Go then. On board down to the chicane. P7 now after the pit stop. Taking a slightly different line there from me as owner in front. A bit of a shorter line as we come through the chicane once again. What an amazing chorus. Look at that front wall input there. Not even a hint of a lift from the Italian driver. So much aerodynamic grip in these Red Bull X 2019 cars, coupled with that awesome engine, lots of power, lots of grip, can't think of a better combination. Top two in the pit lane then, so Roach and also Cruzli Coque Lopez into the box, so soft tyres for both of those drivers, Joe Barbara also going into the box as well, Lopez and Carazza under investigation for a collision, we didn't see exactly what happened there I don't think, but we'll keep an eye out and see whether any penalties being handed out, Sasaki versus Miyazono, side by side we go, into the chicane, Miyazono with the inside line, Gallo's going to try and pick Sasaki's pocket here as well as he's run to the curb on the outside, three abreast as we come down into the right hand, a bit of hip and shoulder there between Miyazono and Sasaki who gets again run out onto the curb, does that present the opportunity that Serrano is looking for? No, not quite for now, so De Bruyne is the lead the way, and at the moment he's the train, or the leader of the train I should say, but is it going to be derailed? Because Gallo, Miyazono, Sasaki all on a very good common enough tyre, and it's a matter of when and not if. Here we go, Gallo side by side with him, down the back straight, he's going to have more traction under braking, more grip under braking, Miyazono's going to lunge to the inside, that's going to upset Gallo's opportunity, and relegates him down into third place, Miyazono's through on the inside, Serrano's going to try and join in on the action there as well, Tabru's going to get really hung out to dry here quite potentially, but no, manages to gather it all up as we come down this back straight through the tunnel, side by side we go, Tabru versus Miyazono, Gallo's there ready on the inside as well as Jose Serrano, Arno, Miyazono lunges finally for the race lead. De Bruyne relegated down into second. Side by side we are with Serrano versus Dremont for fourth position there as well. And we come across the timeline. De Bruyne tries to take the lead away from Takuma Miyazono. And look who's following him in his slipstream. Valerio Gallo, three wide, once again into the breaking zone. Who's going to have track position? De Bruyne lunges to the inside. Does he get the move done? Side by side we go with Miyazono. Here comes Gallo through, two for the price of one. Fantastic for Valerio Gallo. And Serrano coming through on the inside. Side as well. All right, it's all going on here in the final. My word, Gallo there and Miyazono. Miyazono had a great move down the bottom half of the circuit, took two for one. Gallo repaid that favour into T3 there. Amazing racing from these guys, keeping it clean, keeping it quick.
and in that, Cardi Bruin still holding on to that medium tyre for P3, but Gallo Miezolo, it's a fist fight between these two now, both want to lead, both want to try and put a gap in front, behind there, Sir Oliver's moving De Bruin, De Bruin forces his way up the inside, past everyone, up into first place, I think that was clean as well, somehow got the car stopped, and is still there, fighting with the guys in the soft tyres, he has to do that, he has to, because he's on that medium compound tyre, he needs to start his guys as much as possible, and they're still squabbling, Kai De Bruin, Serrano, looking to the outside, looking all the way around the outside, can he make that stick? He does, Serrano, what a move, all the way around Kai De Bruin, and it's still going on, John. Look who's at the back of the train, Coque Lopez, fresh as soft compound of tyres right at the end of this race, it's going to set him up an absolute treat, side by side we go, three oh, wide, oh. once again, Serrano on the inside, Gallo in the middle, De Bruyne on the outside, he won't have much grip, but lunges his way through as Gallo runs it wide, on the exit of the curve goes De Bruyne. Goodness me, this is absolutely amazing racing, as Serrano's got the inside line, De Bruyne's on the outside then, as they go through this right-hander, he's going to get roughed up onto the curb, is the Dutchman here, and that may allow Gallo to come through, down the hill we go, through the left-hander, two by two through here is risky, as we know, Gallo decides to scratch the better part of Bala, and slots himself back through to third place, keep an eye out for Drummond and Miazono in the background as well, De Bruyne is driving an absolute worldie at the moment, down into the braking zone we go, four abreast as we head through, Serrano's on the inside, he's through into the lead, Gallo's into second, Drew Mott now through into third, with Miazono in fourth, and De Bruyne relegated down into fifth place, but look who's up into sixth position, Coque Lopez, fresh soft tyres, he is in a prime position to win this race. Oh, something's got to give at some point, Tom, these guys are going at it like it's the last lap, there are still six laps to go, Serrano inside, Gallo in the middle, Drew Mott trying to now make his way around the outside, the Frenchman now starting to move up towards the front of the grid, Coque Lopez is in P4, on that soft tyre, it's in the back of the grid. And now we go on to lap 27. There is barely a second covering all these cars on screen right now. They're two, three wide into the first chicane. If you want this second, get all this contact. Serrano's off into the barrow. We said something have to give there. I think that was contact between Drummond. In the back, who else? Suzaki and Miyazono. Yeah, oh my word! The two Japanese drivers have come to blows. Oh, there's Serrano doing a 52 point turn to get himself facing the right way. Karat is going to come through. It was always going to kick off, wasn't it? It couldn't continue like that. It's just not sustainable racing in that sort of direction. And now it's gone from a seven way scrap down to a three way scrap. And here's Lopez now on the back of Valerio Gallo. Four second position. He's going to have more grip under braking. Does he make it into the hairpin? Not quite for now, but he's there, ready to bounce. We, we, we keep saying that Lopez started from the back of the grid. Drummond started 10th. Here's the replay. Let's try and unpack what happened there. That went on very quickly. So here's Serrano. Drummond on the outside here. Turns into the corner. There is contact there, but it's not. And then oh. more again from Kai De Bruyne. Yes, that was a difficult one now. I don't know. I mean, I mean, Drummond definitely drove into the back of Serrano, but do you... Wage here was a bit of a weird line from Serrano. Well, look, it's under investigation. Let's see what the stewards do. Let's hear the big news in that Callum Roach. And also, to a point, Kai De Bruyne as well. He got duffed up in the action there as well. So, what are we now? Four laps to go. Drummond, Gallo, Lopez for the win. Just a reminder, Drummond hasn't scored in the Nations Cup up until this point. And he threw the victory away a few weeks ago in Montreal. So, grid position, Drummond plus nine. Gallo, where he started, Coque Lopez plus nine. Robbie Heck plus seven. This has been an amazing strategic race from the top four runners. Can Coque Lopez do something that has never happened here in the Nations Cup? Can Coque Lopez go from last to first and take the win here at Prague in the Grand Final? Still a few laps left to decide this. Gallo, I think Gallo is someone who's been the bridesmaid very often in these events. Never the, never the bride, so to speak. So can he change that here today? Through the chicane one more time. The pressure will be a little bit off now for these guys because the, uh, the, uh, a lot of the train has unfortunately derailed, as so to speak. But uh, now it's Drummond, Gallo and Lopez. Any one of these drivers can win this race. All drivers, all these drivers know how to win a race. It's going to be an insane finish and only a few laps to go here at Dragon Trail. Well, who is going to be able to soak up the pressure like a sponge and who is going to end up with a damn squib? Let's see what happens over the timeline we go to go then. Coque Lopez been right on board with the Spaniard, looking calm, controlled and cool as it stands. There is Valerio Gallo and Killian Drummond. As we head through this chicane, just buying this time now it's Coque Lopez trying for them to make too many mistakes. This guy Barbara just moves ahead of Kai De Bruyne. Fourth fifth position, that medium tyre has not worked out for De Bruyne in the last stage of this one. Of course, not aided by the incident that we saw with Serrano and Drummond a couple of laps ago. 
works into it didn't, I think, is the, uh, <laughs> the way it's out. I think he could have really been a good contender at the end of this race, but, I mean, it just took the slightest fit. These guys were racing so close, it's almost like watching stock car racing, except run a circuit with cars with a ton of air on. But uh, racing's still underway. Now, I get the impression that Gallo and Lopez are just sort of waiting now. Neither of them want to lead into the last lap. No further action between Serrano yeah. and Drew Bond. Racing into the nickel middle, right? So they can be rubber off in those bits. I mean, I, sometimes you've got to be right. I mean, <laughs> it's one in the millennium, but I'll take it. So Gallo there sits behind Drew Mott, not quite as wide of a line through there. You can see Lopez just not wanting to sit in the slip through. As you said, Jimmy, his bike is not going to too early because, let's be fair, it's like a game of poker in this one. You don't show your hand quite too soon until you know that the other competitors are ready to try and show theirs. You want to take a guess who has the best tyres on the three? I would wager a guess that it's Coke Lopez. It is Coke Lopez. This he was is the pit, wasn't he? Of yeah, course. This is just experience. This is what experience looks like. We say here in the Grand Prismo World Series that speed will only get you so far. Experience pushes you over the top. So we have two laps left to run. Well, at the end of this one, anyway. Drumont at the front, Gallo second, Lopez third, covered by only six tenths of a second. Robbie Head, though, on for a good result in P4, kind of brewing and recovering. Guy Barbara, after an instant at the start of the race, is up to P6. Miazona also trying to come back through the field. Now, these guys are the toast they've ever been. Will Gallo go through that the inside? Is this him making his move? Gallo up into the lead past Killian Drumont. Maybe now this is it. This is the breakaway. Valerio Gallo is stating his intent. He wants to win this race. Off he goes out front. Drumont now is second. Lopez will have seen this, but we now see a reaction. Look at the tyres there, 10% more on the rear for Coquille Lopez. Doesn't sound like a lot, it's going to make a massive difference in the closing stage of this one. Drumont, interestingly, got the worst tyres compared to all of these top three. Here's Ono gets the better of Guy Barba, that's a crucial thing, because that's a point on the board yeah. in the World Series stand. It's top six scoring points in this one, just to remind you. Across the timing line, we go. The ultimate lap then, we begin here, and Drumont goes defensive. Lopez going for that sweeping line around the outside as he lunged through into the chicane for now. He needs to, I think this is getting towards the point now where it's time to make your moves, time to show your hand to the drivers around you. Pekka Lopez did that to avoid the sit stream, so he could keep it flat and just keep going from there. Here comes Gallo, here comes Dumont, here comes Lopez. What a race this has been so far. We are rapidly reaching the conclusion of the Nations Cup Grand Final here at Prague. And here are your contenders. We have Valerio Gallo, Kylian Dumont and Coquel Lopez. Three names you'll be familiar with if you watch these live events often, as we go down now again to the best ever taken spot on the course, Dumont goes round the outside, can he make it work? I'm not sure Gallo defending will have the run round, Dumont will have the speed, here comes Coquet Lopez too, Gallo just about keeping the lead, and Lopez goes up by, through, past Dumont, so it's Gallo, Lopez, Dumont now, as we come round, to start the final lap of this race. Well, we've been watching the pot for the last five or six laps, and it's now starting to finally boil as we ride on board Drumont there in third position. Lopez and Gallo up at the sharp end of this one. Former champions in the top two positions. Let's remind you as we begin the final lap of racing here in Prague for World Series in Gran Turismo in the Nations Cup. Down the start, finish straight we go. Through the fast right-handed kink of turn one, into the breaking turn of turn two. Lopez has a half look on Gallo, but no room at the end. Yeah, no way he's going to let that happen. So now it's really one more overtaking opportunity, maybe two more for this lap. And Coca Lopez needs to set that up. If he wants to win this race, Drumont there, just biding his time behind, I think. Gallo leads then as we come through the end of the first sector, down through this snaking section. This is where you get a bit of a draft. This is where you try and set up the move down the hill. And then will Gallo try and back Lopez up into this downhill right-hander? For the sake we go then, Lopez deep in the draft, gaining on Gallo in front. Looks to the inside, Gallo going defensive straight away, trying to break that toe. Very experienced driver in the both of them. Will he have a move down here into the bottom? He does not know. So it's all now down to one corner, Tom. Yeah, the chicane is going to be the decider for this one. Who's going to be more committed? Will we see any mistakes coming through? Bit of a slip and a slide there for Valerio Gallo. Through the chicane we go. No to tail action between the top three. Any one of them could win this one. Nice and easy for them all so far. Surely Lopez is going to have a lunge. Gallo goes defensive. Side by side we go for the race victory into the final corner. Here comes Drumont back through on the inside of Coke Lopez. Sliding oh! Oh! And can't as Lopez gets spun round by Kylian Drumont. Gallo wins the Nations Cup Grand Final here in Prague from Kylian Drumont. And Coke and Lopez in third ahead of Robbie Heck and Kai De Bruyne. 
what a final couple of corners and it was always going to be a watch pot that we had to boil and unfortunately it boiled over for Coke Lopez. Look how much that means to Valerio Gallo. He's been trying to win an Asian Cup event here for so long. Finally takes a victory. Coke Lopez just, just holding on for, for P3 there. Look how much that means to Valerio Gallo. You love to see that. That's how much dedication goes into the events, how much pressure these drivers feel when you cross the line and finally it's unleashed. What a race, best race you've seen, I think, ever in the Grand Tour World Series. Amazing job from Valerio Gallo, from Killian Dramont and for Coque Lopez. And you can see the outpouring of emotion there for Valerio Gallo. It hasn't been a particularly easy couple of seasons. He won the Nations Cup back in 2021, if you remember, and it's been a bit of a lean period since then. He's been there and thereabouts, but he's suffered a lot of misfortune along the way. He's been practicing day and night hours and hours of practice to get himself up to this point and finally he